So we know that there is a very clear relationship between receipt of hospice care services at the end of life and quality of end of life care. So if you look at the National Quality Forum, there are several metrics that they pose uh, to measure the quality of care at the end of life, and these are applied to all patients with cancer. It's a yardstick by which we are held basically to uh, measure and, and attest to the quality of care we're providing among those who, who die of their disease. And when you look at patients with blood cancers compared to those with solid organ tumors, they unfortunately do much worse across all of these end-of-life quality measures. These include things like receipt of chemotherapy in the last two weeks of life, dying in the hospital, uh, spending time in an emergency department in the last month or so of life, um, utilization of intensive care unit services, things like that where if you ask an average person they would say, you know, if my time is short I'd really rather be at home, I don't want to be in the hospital, I'd, I'd rather die at home and so on. Um, so we know that blood cancer patients do worse in that regard. Some of the data that we presented at this year's ASH annual meeting from the SAIR Medicare analysis of leukemia patients shows very clearly that those patients with leukemias in the U.S. who use hospice care services perform dramatically better on all of those national quality forum end-of-life quality measures. So they're far less likely to die in the hospital. They're much less likely to receive chemotherapy in the last few weeks of life, spend time in an intensive care unit, and so on.